So, in this particular game here, obviously we're bringing the knight out to support the pawn, but also to manage this area here, manage this area here, pretty straightforward stuff. Bishop comes down, and if we remember, I don't really like this fried liver malarkey. I mean, it doesn't really work anyway, but you still have to box clever, even if, you know, they get the pawn off there and that type of thing, and, and they get your rook off. So you still have to box clever in terms of position on the board. So it is more ideal for a positional player, um, if you allow it. But it's a, just a little bit too scrappy, and it's even a bit too scrappy for the likes of me, and I like scrappy play. So bring the bishop through just to circumvent that. So it's pretty simple, straightforward stuff, if I remember to do it. So bringing the knight out makes sense, you know, it's uh, attacking this pawn here, it's de defended at the minute, could defend this pawn if it was going to blast up, but again it's really just allowing the king to go and get castled. So they push through the centre, I mean a simple capture gets that out of the way, you could push here and look to play sort of roulette with this type of motion, rather than pushing down. So we capture, smaller piece attacking a higher piece, can't be wrong. And we capture this time. Um, ordinarily, we just um, push this pawn up here. You know, we like pushing this pawn just to stop this knight from coming, this pawn from coming here and just taking here. And this pawn's managing this square. But we like to fluctuate just to practice different ways and different um, ideas. So we captured, knowing full well the queen's going to come down there. And um, we do like this pawn move, um, attacking the queen, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. It's all pretty straightforward. Like the gauge bar showing, oh well, it's advantageous for Queen for M um, White, but throughout all my years of playing this type of maneuver, I've never really had anybody actually utilize whatever it is that means that that is a weakness. You know, the pawn attacking the Queen, no, not once. So it's it's nice to throw it in every now and again. Don't do it all the time, just in case somebody does have a magical sort of um, mysterious play against it, but. In my experience, they haven't done. So we castle, keep king safety, that keeps that nice and steady. And then we push the pawn up, opening in the white square bishop. We're obviously looking to attack this bishop to get it out of the way. We do know that the knight potentially can jump into here. And then they're going for the cheapie. As soon as we see the cheapie, we know that the opponent kind of has run out of moves um, in terms of actually playing the art of chess. So they're going for the quick and dirty type, tactic type things, cheap moves, if you like. And it's no insult on the player. This is just the, my idea of when I see these types of moves, and um, they are cheap. You can get away with them if, the, if you're asleep. So then they bring the knight down, because obviously we've seen that this bishop is going to be coming here. They bring the knight into the game, but it is like a single type attack. The gauge bar showing that's okay, but to me it's like, oh, it's a single attack, it's not really improving your position. So we can take that knight off the board, and the bishop takes. Now the bishop's now got this diagonal onto the pawn through to the rook. So just bringing the rook off so that then we can look to mobilize, but also really look to attack the bishop, which was our initial goal. So they push the pawn down. Again, it's not improving their position. The start square bishop's not out in the game. I don't want it to be. Their rooks aren't linked up. They're not taking advantage of any key squares with their rooks. Their queen is just standing there by itself, just trying to figure out how to get some type of pressure put on the king, but it's by itself. So I'm happy. You know, in terms of all those negative aspects of their type of position on the board and their strategy, um, I'm very comfortable. So we attack the bishop. Nice and steady like we like to do. And they move the bishop. So in essence, we're gaining a kind of initiative now in terms of them losing time and tempo. As we said, they're trying to find some sort of way of getting some squish on our king. The queen is on the wrong square anyway. It would need to be on this square. If it was on that square, the bishop would take. So the bishop kind of wasted its time actually coming to attack this pawn. So we took advantage of that and we attacked the bishop. Computer doesn't like this move, you know. I like it. Whatever the opponent is supposed to do, I mean, 
I think they're supposed to do the on pass on thing, but even then, I said, well, it's not going to give them an improved position, I don't think. So either way, I would be willing to just take with the bishop. So there was no issues there. So the bishop moves back. So we can take the pawn here. Now we're looking for the queen to sit in this position quite nicely. We can harass it a little bit with our bishop. But the queen doesn't actually take, and um, this is potentially a loss of a piece because if the queen takes then we, the queen would take their bishop so all that waiting and waiting for activity for from the opponent and the bishop comes rushing out no kind of plan and ends up falling down the other side of the cliff because it's not actually seeing where it's going and it doesn't have a parachute so we captured and at this point the opponent resigned they did offer a rematch and I'll show you the rematch in the next session.